Sir, it is YouTube live now. Yeah, okay. So, Can Rohini. Yes, yes, sir, if you give yeah. hello. So, Rohini, please. Yes. So, good afternoon, all, and welcome. Welcome to the weekly online lecture series on satellite metrology. Today is the uh, lecture number 13, which is uh, our speaker for today is Dr. R.C. Bhatia, sir, who is former additional director general from India Metrological Department, IMD India. And he will be talking about real time operational utility of important features seen in satellite images and their derived products in different seasons, which is part one of his presentation. So before uh, moving on to the lecture, I would request Professor Dr. Someshwar Das, sir, who is Secretary Sama, to give the welcome address. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rohini. Uh, uh, thank you, Saab, uh, President of Sama, uh, Dr. Bhatia Saab, uh, the Chairman of the Advisory Panel of the Lecture Series on Satellite Meteorology, also the former Additional Director General of Meteorology, IMD. Dr. Thaplial Saab uh, is also the member of the advisory panel of the lecture series on satellite meteorology. Our colleagues, uh, the members of the organizing committee, Dr. Mohan, Dr. Mili, Dr. Rohini, Dr. Dibya Prakash, all the distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you all on the 13th uh, lecture of the 20 lectures satellite meteorology. Uh, so, Sriz, Bhatia uh, uh, I think already he has given one lecture uh, on 9th of September. It was the second lecture of this series and uh, today, uh, I mean, that was his first lecture, but the second lecture of this series. And today is his second lecture. Bhatia uh, Saab is well known in satellite meteorology. He has a vast experience on on various aspects of satellite meteorology, particularly the operational part. And the, the good thing is that uh, it's very inspiring to see that he's still interested in teaching this subject to the younger generation. Uh, he's taking keen interest also in the uh, International Federation of Satellite uh, uh, Meteorological Societies, uh, educational uh, uh, part. Uh, he has uh, he has taken very keen interest in that, so we are all lucky to hear him again on uh, this subject. Uh, uh, since everybody is familiar about the lecture series rules and regulations, so I don't have to repeat that. Uh, and uh, today is the 13th lecture, so more than 50% of the lecture is already over. And as we have been telling that, you know, to get a certificate, you have to have at least 75% attendance. And I hope that you know, all of the, all the participants are regularly attending the lectures. Uh, so please do uh, enjoy the lecture series and wish you all the best. Uh, on to Dr. Rohini. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request AVM Professor Dr. Ajit Tyagi, sir, who is president of SAMA to give his address. Sir, you are muted. We can't hear you. Uh, it's a, a great pleasure for me to welcome uh, Bhatia Saab, who is, uh, I think, uh, manifestation and, and, and symbol of uh, advancements in satellite metrology in the, in the, in the country. And uh, particularly in the IMAD, uh, he had been and what I really admire about him is that uh, he continues to take interest, uh, which many of the even operational meteorologists now don't take. Various developments in satellite meteorology and the operational products which are available, satellites and uh, their application in real time, uh, which he's going to talk. Uh, I think no, there cannot be any anyone better than him uh, to to present these cases uh, where we can use satellite pictures in real time uh, to take 
uh, make assessment. He had been um, not only in the IMAD, he had been providing training to the various uh, institutions in the country wherever satellite meteorology is not. So, and we are really thankful. Like he's supporting SAMA in general and particularly related to the satellite meteorology. And he, they have conceptualized along with Sapriyal, Baby Simon and, and other colleagues a very good uh, training program. And um, it is, uh, I'm sure, getting very good response. And uh, the YouTube lectures will be, I think, useful even after this online series is completed. So once again, my request to all participants, please pay attention to whatever he is covering. Yeah, is it uh, stuck? I think some oh, some problem. Okay. So shall I continue, sir? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yes. before uh, so thank you, sir. And before the speaker starts presenting, I would like that. Good... Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Backup. Yeah. We lost you. Yeah, it's a great backup. Uh, we have a uh, Many people in the transit moving here and there, doing various other activities, but uh, our team is really wonderful. Uh, they, they fall back and organize these programs uh, punctually in, in a very befitting manner. So thanks to them, the organizing committee members, all uh, as a team are working. So we, I'm sure uh, this series will be a great success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So now, before the speaker starts speaking, I would like to introduce him quickly and share my screen. So, uh, Sri R. C. Bhatia, sir, received uh, served as India Metro in the India Meteorological Department for more than thirty six years and retired as Additional Director General, India Meteorological Department in December 2008. He was Permanent Representative of India with WMO and was elected as a member of the Executive Council during 15th session of WMO Congress in 2007. After undergoing training in satellite metrology in CEMS, which was in France during 1977, he has been very actively involved in the INSAT Metrological Applications Program of Government of India. He played a re leading role in planning for all inside series of satellites and establishment of ground segment facilities for the meteorological applications program of these satellites right from the early stages of inception. He participated in many international and national meetings and conferences related to satellite activities. He has published more than 50 research papers in various journals or uh, proceedings of conferences. As in charge of instrumentation and telecommunications activities for a few years, he has made significant contributions in establishment of Doppler weather radar network in the department. His contributions were also important for improving the quality of radio sound observations, automatic weather stations, and establishing new type of instruments at airport meteorological offices. He has played a leading role in planning for overall modernization program of IMD, and its implementation in a strict time-bound schedule during the period 2006 to 2008. This program has served to be a game changer for IMD. A large positive impact of this program has been observed on various services being provided by IMD for all sectors of national economy, particularly on the cyclone warning services. After retirement from active service, he served as a consultant in IMD for a short period. At present, he is engaged in review of some of the research papers sent by the editorial board of journal Mossam and delivering lectures on satellite metrology in some of the training courses of IMD and ISRO. He was also president of India Meteorological Society, Indian Meteorological Society during 2007 to 9 and participated in the first two meetings of IF, IFMS. So we are happy to have you, sir, here for the second lecture. I will stop sharing and I would request you to share your screen or presentation.
Are you seeing my screen? Sir, you can share your presentation. Okay. Is it? Can you see now? Not yet, sir. Yes. Oh, what is it? I am. I have shared, but there is another pattern on the top which needs to be ticked. Is that correct? Sir, if you click on the green button which says share screen. Uh, which which one? Say, I have a green button I have ticked actually. Then uh, it will show you multiple screens. You can uh, share the presentation. You can click on the presentation and say share. The green button I have ticked already. I can do again. Yeah, if you do it again, you will see multiple screens. Uh, yes, I have, I have ticked again. So can you see many screens are like whiteboard? Uh, yeah, I can see a few so screens. I Wherever your presentation is, if you click on that and say share. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fine. Can you see now? No. 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 Not yet, sir. Presentation पे क्लिक कर दीजिए ना हाँ प्रेजेंटेशन पे किया है मैंने एक मिनट तो शेयर नहीं कर रहा है सर उसपे क्लिक करने के बाद आपको शेयर आएगा ना ब्लू कलर का उसपे एक बार क्लिक करिए अच्छा एक मिनट प्रेजेंटेशन पे कर दिया मैंने और राइट बॉटम में शेयर आएगा शेयर ब्लू कलर का उसी उसी विंडो अच्छा ओके ओके नीचे ठीक है हाँ ना या अभी आ गया ओके ठीक थैंक यू आ रहा है सर मिस ओके आई कैन पुट इट ऑन या नाउ यू कैन पुट पुट इट ऑन फुल स्क्रीन मोड आई पुट इट कैन यू सी नाउ या यस सर वी कैन यू कैन स्टार्ट सर Okay, good afternoon, everybody. We start the second lecture of my program, and the topic it will focus on the operational use of important features in images and the derived products. So, part one is about South Face Monsoon and North Face Monsoon. Now, before I Proceed. Let me give some references which are very important. First is monsoon monograph, uh, edited by Dr. Ajit Tyagi, and the number is here. It has thirteen chapters, and what is most important is chapter eight, observational aids and monitoring of monsoon by Dr. O. P. Singh. He has covered extensively the monsoon monitoring uh, different aspects in this uh, publication. And there's another chapter 13 by Dr. Y. E. S. Raj about Northeast monsoon. And about the Northeast monsoon, there's also a MET monograph by Dr. M. Rajivan. It is 2022, quite recent. And details of this uh, reference are here. It's a very good report, exhaustive report, which talks about Northeast monsoon in general and also covers many aspects. It's a, Good report. And let me give some very general background about products and pictures. Uh, as you know, they are most important for real time weather forecasting. And uh, what is important is what you see on the image and products. Uh, we have to see how they relate to the synoptic situation and the weather as observed uh, on day to day basis. And of course, there are black and white and colored pictures, R RGB products from various sources, like Inset 3D, Meteosat 9, Himavari, etc. And special bulletins are issued by IMD based on these uh, based on these pictures uh, by manual interpretation. 
and what you what they do is they give description of cloud types based on manual interpretation. Derived products are also there. Sample buttons sent to. I'm just showing one here. Uh, what they do is they give description of the cloud system in various areas: north, south, east, west, and dis western disturbance, vortex, etc. And uh, area covered is 50 north to 35 south and 40 east to 125 east. So you can see this sample button and sometimes they also give uh, RGB products to bring out certain important features. They also show the products, it's a wind product, RGB product. And also they show water vapor image and description of features outside India. As I said, it covers a very big area. So some important features, the systems in other regions are also covered, which are important. And of course, uh, uh, the quite important products are from Wisconsin University. Uh, you are seeing the web website address is here. And uh, most important is TPW Mimic. It's very useful to identify whether low pressure area is formed or not. And of course, there are upper winds, 100 to 500. Description is there given. CMVs, convergence, divergence, vorticity, wind shear, mid shear, and so on. And uh, these are very important for day-to-day -day operation, particularly wind shear, as I will show sometime uh, towards end, that this has proved to be useful for giving better inference about the present cyclone, which is there in Bay of Bengal today. Uh, of course, it's not cyclone, it's deep depression, going to be cyclone maybe by tomorrow. And you see these products every day, and I'm just showing one sample. So basically, you are able to see that the wind patterns in the upper air and troughs, ridges, which are very important, and uh, CMVs with uh, infrared pictures, upper divergence, it's very important. Convergence, vorticity at different levels, as you see, it was yesterday uh, over uh, Bay of Bengal, high vorticity because of this term, which I said a few minutes ago, at different heights, wind shear, mid shear, and wind shear tendency. Now, coverage area is quite big over the Indian Ocean. It is same for all the projects. Now, this is very important. Coverage area, it has to be as north as possible because otherwise uh, we can't see western disturbances. Uh, north coverage has to be very good, as I will show in some examples. Uh, I think uh, I just forgot to mention that Dr. Swagata just remind me when I have finished uh, something like 35 or 40 minutes. Okay, so that I wind up when uh, 50 minutes are time that we have. Okay, coverage area quite big for the in, over the north, and all the products has to be coverage area has to be same. In fact, uh, some uh, more than a year back, a request was made to Wisconsin University for increasing the coverage area uh, towards north, but without sacrificing coverage area to the south. And within, I think, a week, they did that and they provided better coverage now, more coverage. And what is important is the animation sequence of the products is very good. They provide a lot of information. And animation sequences are there on the website for five days. You can see them, except wind products. Uh, wind products, if you want to see animation, you have to make your own. And uh, so detailed product description are available on the website and uh, even reference to the paper uh, published on, on the base projects are there. And in a Zoom mode also, uh, you can see over Bay of Bengal and adjoining Indian Ocean specifically. This is the Zoom mode. Suppose if you want to see today's system, you can see by going to the Zoom mode, I mean, by focusing more on a given area. 
product grid is also there and there are some products also for checking the steering current. Uh, product quality is very good, excellent, because RMS errors and biases are, they are worked out. Elaborate quality checks are done. And uh, display is also very important. See, if you, you may have very good quality of the product, RMSC, biases, etc., and they are going into the model and, uh, uh, they are giving positive out uh, positive impact but what is also important is the display has to be very good so that at just one uh, view of the product you can see how are the system you can get very good idea and most important thing is whether they bring out the meteorological features and whether they respond to the change in say Nordic environment situation. She suppose a trough is moving, the winds, they should show that the trough is moving. They, they should be reflected in the winds. And as you know, they are assimilated in NWP models. Uh, so question comes, why use them separately? Because NWP models, they are using them and uh, analysis is there. But what is important is NWP models, it takes quite a long time to assimilate data and then products are available every six hours or so. But these products, you can see every three hours and outputs are available within two hours of the uh, image time. Say zero GMT products, if you want, you can get by about 7.30 in the morning on the website, they are updated sometime even before that. And the use of and the satellite picture and product is sometimes they are used for checking NWP products. Sometimes there are errors in the NWP, so they are used to check and if required, modify sometimes. Uh, of course, day-to-day uh, -day basis, people see them. And now about the monsoon, there are some semi-permanent features, say mescaline high, heat low, monsoon trough, jet, Somali jet, Tibetan high, tropical history jet. These are the, uh, for, there's a chapter on these semi-permanent features in the book, which I referred initially in the beginning by Dr. Tagi and others. And the main features, the just before onset of monsoon over Kerala, as you know, uh, increase in deep convective clouds over Southeast Arabian Sea and surrounding areas. Gradual movement of cloud north of equator, as you can see by animation of visible infrared images and moisture influx. In addition to water vapor images, TPWD, TPW product is very good and depth of convection can be monitored by CTT cloud top temperatures. In fact, uh, as you know, monsoon is seasonal reversal of the winds. If you see this, TPW product on 27th April 22 or uh, and any say end of April, even beginning May, you this is what you see. The winds are from the east. Of course, it's the transition season, changes will take place. But if you go to next 19th May, a few days, the wind direction has changed. So we are now moving towards monsoon. So during, actually during initial progression of the monsoon, sometimes we see vertices during initial progression. Sometimes some we see here, sometimes we see here. And it, these vertices, they are quite useful for carrying it forward. And uh, uh, sometimes they develop into higher system, depression, cyclonic storm, and so on. So uh this is first uh, the monsoon current start moving first from bay of bengal as you know and it can be detected in the 850 vorticity product the vertices which i mentioned just now and after a few days maybe another 10 days or so uh, further it progresses and you can now see a build up of moisture over southeast arabian sea and of course, if some well-defined criteria is met, uh, 
out going along with radiation and other thing, then the monsoon is declared. Of course, in this particular year, 22, it was declared over Kerala on 29th May 2022, based on the criteria. And of course, further, if you go in the season, after a few days, the moisture goes up. The It is forward progression of the moist winds. And southwesterlies gradually picking up. And of course, in this particular year, you are seeing that Bay of, this Arabian Sea branch is pretty strong. But this may not happen every year. In this 22, it has happened, but it is not necessary. Every year, it's this way. And sometimes it could be a different picture. And what is important is, after the initial onset has started, sometimes what happens is uh, you see vortices in the southern hemisphere, a vortex form or even cyclone forms after initial onset over the Bay of Bengal. And also a bit far if you go to the east, there are sometimes cyclonic system disturbances which move up. And in such situations, the further progress of the monsoon, now imagine if there's a cyclone here, the entire moisture uh, will go westward and further progression of the monsoon current will be hampered for some time. Of course, once the cyclone moves westward, for this is I am describing because this year it happened this way. 23, 19th May, it started over South East Arabian Sea and it didn't move for about 10 days. It was stuck and then once cyclone moved westward, it uh, picked up and then further progression went. Then uh, again in June, further if you go, the monsoon current moved forward further northward and of course i'm just picking up a week up to maybe one or two more now if you come to june it's quite now history have started building up in the uh, you see arabian sea quite strong but it happened in 22 but may not have happened every year i mean you have to keep that in view and you can now see that by about August, uh, 7th, 8th August, it's uh, covered almost. So what you see is basically northward progression of the moisture. And of course, there are some products, long wave radiation, which is very useful. And of course, I think I need not talk much about it, as you know about. And uh, this is a sample product of outgoing long wave radiation. In fact, this is for 8th July when there was heavy rainfall over Himachal Pradesh because of uh, western disturbance and its interaction with the monsoon. I will talk about it after a few minutes. And of course, the CMVs are also useful. They are the depth of westerlies should be maintained up to 600. So these uh, features in the winds, you can see in the derived products. Uh, satellite winds and uh, scattermeter is also one of the important things and they are useful for monitoring. Uh, this is one sample product. You see very strong winds over the Indian Ocean and uh, the now moisture, it, it has picked up and integrated water vapor about which we are talking. It is also useful for monitoring. Dr. Simon uh, during his talk he mentioned about it, and uh, uh, in fact, after the start of OceanSat 1, uh, we worked together, IMD and ISRO SAC, for uh, every monsoon season for monitoring, and some reports were brought out about which Dr. Simon referred about a week back. And of course, quantitative precipitation estimates are also there. So this QP project, again, it brings out the rainfall it is quantitative estimation. It's not uh, average. It's, it's actually average over space and time. And But it is useful that uh, to find out how far monsoon has progressed and so on. Now, just I'm giving example of one vertex formation over Arabian Sea, 
which happened this year. Uh, you see, uh, important thing is that uh, in this area, uh, th there should be rotation. That is quite important. So if rotation is there, it means the system has formed. Generally, from the NWB project, you can give a forecast that a system will form on such and such date. But whether actually it has formed or not, that you monitor on a day-to-day -day basis. And this product is very useful to say confidently that the system has formed. Uh, you can see here now on 4th, uh, uh, yeah, 4th June, the, the rotation is more. It, it has now formed. So this product is very useful, I have seen. Uh, based on rotation, if you give the inference, it works out to be correct uh, most of the time, including the present system which formed over Bay of Bengal just a few days back, a similar type of rotation was seen in the TPWD data. Of course, along with that, we have to see vorticity, divergence, and wind products also sometimes they show these features. And I was mentioning vorticity. So you see vorticity has increased because a vortex has formed, low pressure area has formed. Now, it's a very active phase of the monsoon. Uh, I'm just bringing out synoptic situation because you see the picture you see every day, the cloud system, how they relate to the synoptic situation. That is uh, what you have to see and how it will uh, can be used for giving better inference. So in this, there was a low pressure area over central parts of North MP with, with this extent up to 7.6 on 29 June, I'm talking. And there was also a Western disturbance as a trough in mid troposphere with its axis at 5.8, roughly along 74 to the north of 30. And another important feature is in monsoon flow is offshore trough. It was there from Maharashtra to Kerala on this day. And there was a sizer over Gujarat. And also important feature, is because so far monsoon has not covered the entire country on 29 June. And there was an east-west trough. So there is no that uh, monsoon trough at the surface when we give. Uh, we give only after monsoon has onset over the entire country. But even before that, there was a East-West trough from Northwest Rajasthan to East Rajasthan to center of Gopar, Jharkhand, and then eastward to Nagaland. So this is the picture I was mentioning. So you can see the cloudiness due to offshore trough, the East-West trough, what I was referring, and uh, all these cloud systems, they indicate that monsoon is quite strong and progressing further. And the visible picture, you can see visible infrared. And this is the picture from Himawari. I mean, heavy rainfall areas, uh, the product taken from Himawari. Of course, previous few pictures were also from Himawari. We also have our own insert picture. Uh, then, Two participants raised hands. Sir, actually, uh, they cannot ask the question, so they have they have been uh, asked. Uh, Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, they are not. Uh, it's not an interactive. They have. Uh, we have asked the participants to type their questions in the Q and A box. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll have it at the end, sir. After your. Okay, okay. No, but I am fine. Which oh, it was not moving forward. I think it has come back to the. Uh, oh, your uh, presentation is stuck. It's coming. Okay. okay. No, it is creeping back to the 
normal size and sir can you go to that slide and then you start from there i mean yeah i am going okay Yeah, it has come. Yeah, yes. Okay. So on 30th, there was a low pressure area of Bay of Bengal, and this is the distribution that you see over the uh, in the TPW product. And the images of 3D, they are here. You can see the clouding due to low pressure area over this uh, Bay of Bengal, and uh, it will then move westward. A visible picture, infrared, uh, sorry, this is water vapor. And of course, the uh, vorticity here that confirms that low pressure area has. Form. and in, it has increased okay now in addition to the strong monsoon there is a, a condition of weak monsoon in august 13 uh, 2023 we had weak monsoon for 13 days and weak monsoon you know that uh, this is how the distribution of moisture is seen due to weak monsoon you in fact uh, this was not due to day-to-day -day movement of the monsoon trough. The synoptic condition was there were dry northwesterlies prevailing over northwest India, and uh, uh, the monsoon trough was close to the foothills for many days, and maybe north up. And the system, the clouding over east that you are seeing, is because there is a uh, trough. From sub Himalayan West Bengal to Bay of Bengal. That is why you are seeing it. And uh, so this is the distribution you see in the images. And again on 11th August, same, similar feature. But important thing is uh, when there is a break monsoon, you are seeing southern hemisphere equatorial trap. This is a very uh, normally well known feature in break monsoon condition. Now, what is important is this is break monsoon, and sometimes during break monsoon, there is heavy rainfall over Himachal Pradesh and northern parts. And uh, you can see that uh, over uh, this is picture from Himavari, actually, this is. 70 degree east, this is 80 degree east, and this is 25 north, 30 north, 30 north here. So you can see the heavy rainfall over the Himalayan region because of western disturbance and monsoon flow, some light interaction is there. And now revival of the monsoon. Now, what happens if it is a prolonged break, you are waiting for, uh, people are asking, when will it come again? So the normal features are that uh, the system forms in the Bay of Bengal, and then it revives. The monsoon trough shifts outward. So on 17th, uh, you are seeing these features. The monsoon trough has shifted southwards. And also you see the feature in the uh, you are seeing a feature in the Bay of Bengal that circulation, the low pressure area has formed on 17th, 18th. And now you can also see the this feature in the Himavari winds. You see all these easterly, uh, southeasterly winds, they indicate that system has formed over Head Bay. You can see this feature even in our own winds. Uh, of course, vorticity is seeing, supporting this feature. And 
now casting applications okay. now sometimes uh, these pictures can be used for now casting as you know uh, it is very important to give short period forecast for heavy rain uh, you can see i am referring to this feature here the two cloud system merging together and if you see it on a real time basis you can give possible heavy rainfall warning two to three hours in advance over certain areas where these cloud systems are meeting. And this we see very frequently. But important thing for this kind of application is that the image registration has to be very good from one image to the other. So in case of Himavari, which I'm showing, uh, it is there and uh, of course, this I will skip for some time. I think this is similar to what I have shown a few minutes back, a few two, three days back uh, before that 30th of July. So this also I will skip. And uh, 28th, again, I think the system is forming. So that is why the vorticity is increasing. All these features are seen. And the most important thing, uh, important is, is convergence. High convergence is seen. And of course, ITC is at convergence. You can see here. And sometimes the western end of the monsoon trough is the normal position. Eastern end is close to the foothills. So this is what happened in 22. Uh, 31st July 22, the western end is in the near normal, eastern end is close to the foothills. You can see uh, the decrease in rainfall over central parts and more rainfall over north, northern Himalayan region. And this is the distribution. Of course, some of these things I have to skip because there was some error in the Okay, now post monsoon season. With the onset of northeast monsoon, the east west seasonal trough ITC that it drifts southward and its mean position is South Arabian Sea to South Bay of Bengal across South Peninsula. And seasonal trough, as you know, it's an area of convergence and it can help formation of circulation low pressure systems and which can lead to convergence and rainfall over the regions. And the main synoptic system affecting rainfall over South Peninsula are the low pressure system, depression, cyclonic storm, and above, troughs in easterly, easterly waves, and upper layer troughs are cyclonic circulation. They are confined to 850, 700 SPA level and it could be oriented in generally in the east-west direction. And sometime what we find during uh, northeast monsoon, the very high surge of highly moist air from the east, and that is associated with very heavy and extremely heavy rainfall over the region. In fact, one such case occurred in 2015, 1st, 2nd December, exactly eight years back over Chennai, and in that, I had a picture of that, but somehow I could not uh, put it. When I started putting it, I think it was showing errors. So I just took it off. Maybe we'll see later if I can put it. I will show sometime. And uh, this is the area, uh, subdivision where Northeast Monsoon is there. And what is important is the Tamil Nadu and Kerala, they receive quite good percentage of annual rainfall during the northeast monsoon season as compared to other regions, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthema, and South India. So it's quite high, even though the main annual rainfall season is monsoon, but northeast monsoon is also very important. And it's also important not only for South Peninsula, but Sri Lanka and Maldives also, uh, it's important. And of course, this is taken from Dr. Rajivan's book, uh, which I referred in the beginning. And it's basically 
taken from GPCP data and northeast monsoon, October to December, maybe major rainfall. Uh, but you see the rainfall maxima here. And as we proceed this way, the rainfall decreases. It's the three months period annual average. Now, specific cases. I am just, uh, I was mentioning the, uh, the important feature is westward side of the monsoon, uh, westward side of the moisture. So you see this in the year 2022. See, what was important is that the dry year prevails over major part of the in, in, in major parts of India, except probably southern regions. And here the, the withdrawal of the monsoon is also important. It should withdraw first from the northern parts of the country and then only the uh, northeast monsoon can be declared. So you are seeing the surge of moisture here in this uh, 27, 10, 22. It's the end of October. I think that was about the time when uh, just a few days before that, the monsoon, southwest monsoon has withdrawn. And see, corresponding to that, you see, because of the, uh, you are seeing this cloud system. So basically, they are due to surge of moisture coming from the east. And they are forming. And if the surge is strong, monsoon convergence is quite high, and upper divergence also supportive, then uh, you can get good weather. But here it is not happening now, but maybe it will happen after one or two days. We will see further. And so this water vapor image. And incidentally, uh, during this season, the western disturbances are also important. You are seeing jet in the north in the water vapor image. And uh, the western disturbance is so important this year. We saw the example uh, just few days back on 27th of November. What happened? You have seen over Gujarat, a very strong western disturbance. And 37 people have died. You know that. And uh, it, it was, of course, due to interaction between easterly winds and the western disturbance. And of course, you can see in this product also, again, the uh, jet stream is brought out here. Uh, in the infrared, uh, you see this type of cloud. So I think uh, maybe I have prepared some exercises for the students. Maybe I will distribute in a day or two through the organizer. And maybe I may ask, I may give you some image and ask you, where is the jet stream? So I think if you pay attention, you will be able to find out immediately and give the answers. And even I remember in my first presentation, which I made in September, and some study material was sent to the organizer in the form of PPTs, PDF in the PDF mode. I think at the end of uh, presentation, there was a exercise. I had asked some question and some answer to be given. Maybe if you pay attention now, you can answer that question, uh, what is coming. Uh, maybe if you have seen it or answered so far, it's good. OK. Uh, of course, uh, verticity is small in this because the mo monsoon is rather weak at the moment, north is monsoon. So verticity is small. It's gradually now. The moisture approaching from the east, which I referred to a few days, few minutes ago, 29th October 22. So you can see very high flux of moisture going towards the east. So once you see this kind of feature, you can say that uh, heavy rains will occur. In of course, other factors have to be seen, convergence and so on. Uh, quite good possibility. And this is what was observed in 2015 also. Of course, shape was different, and I had a movie sequence for three days continuously at that time, 2015, and it's showing a uh, very good surge of moisture. And now you can see thunderstorms are developing over southwest Bay of Bengal due to convergence and the convection 
it is there due to convergence. The convection is developing and it is being maintained by high upper level divergence. So synoptic situations favor abundant supply of moisture from the east. You see this here. Here, the moist air coming from the east and clouds started developing. Of course, westward also you see this system. Jet, which it will continue to be there. And you see, gradually I'm going forward in time and they are increasing. Okay, so convergence, large convergence is there. So system is, it, they are forming because of convergence of the moisture and uh, the converge it is being maintained by high upper divergence. You see high convergence and high upper divergence. So uh, you can analyze this feature, uh, use this feature for analysis of the system. In fact, I have seen one paper by a, a very recent, some three, four months back, by uh, somebody in Dehradun. He has used uh, these features convergence, divergence, to explain heavy rainfall event of, I think, something like in the year 2021, a paper by Rohit Kumar and uh, uh, in charge, I'm forgetting his name, at Dehradun. It's They have used these features to analyze. It's a very good paper. I have just studied some time back. And uh, this is a vorticity associated with that. You now see the picture, okay? And continuously, you can also see the build up has taken place. Now, heavy rain will start over the coast because of this feature. And the western disturbance being carried forward by the jet. And this will also affect northern parts of the country. This is, I think, 22. Of course, if you see Doppler radar image, you can see the clouds approaching. So once you see this, it's very easy to give forecasts. And again, it is next day, 29th October 22. You see next day it has progressed further. And of course, I don't have pictures for the subsequent days. and. Now, some systems in 23, let me describe. Uh, there was early morning rain over New Delhi on 10th November, and for the, not only here, but uh, many parts. And it moved eastwards on the next day. This is, this is the one. This gave very good rain. In fact, the, the, if, if you see Vertisiji project, I have not put them here. Uh, because uh, otherwise presentation become too big. You see, the vorticity descended, vorticity at 500 HPA descended this way, from north. Okay? And uh, the system was progressing and they were clouding over this region in the previous night. Next day, there was very good rain. But uh, this is very important because uh, this is required within one day. The AK AQI improved from 450 to something like 60, 70. So rain is very much required uh, over north, and this disturbance moved next day. You say in the water vapor image. Over next day, you can see the Lucknow radar was showing rain, and all these. Uh, these are system in the easterlies, and they are good. And this year, what I found is uh, African coast has got very good rains when uh, for many days. Right, I think from the end of October, I am seeing almost every day good moist air flow and convergence and so on. So, Somali coast has got good rains this year. And now use for depression on 1st December, uh, which is uh, yesterday. You can see, uh, uh, see the day-to-day -day picture you are seeing on the website of IMB. And just uh, what I'm depicting here is 15 GMT on 29th November. 
the shear product. So what is important is here the shear is quite high. Now why it is, I am brought it is because initially the system formed on 27th and IMD expected that by 29th it will become a depression. But it did not. It became depression only on first. And because on this day, if I show you more images, more sequence of these images, what happened? Uh, in one day, there was a, in this direction, increase of, increase of shear, mid shear. It increased because there are very strong wind jet is there. So increased wind shear is observed here. And then on 1st December at 3 GMT, it has disappeared. And that is on 1st December, it became depression. So this was useful to analyze the situation. And if we, maybe we can pay attention next time and say that it, it, it may not form depression for another one day or so, depending on what situation is. Okay, so this is useful for analyzing the formation of systems. And high impact event of 27 November 23. This is very useful. I mean, uh, you have seen over Gujarat, 34 people have died on 27th November because of high rains, heavy rains, thunderstorms, lightning. And you see, this was the situation on 23rd. In fact, IMD predicted four days before. And uh, if I move over the western side, I have moved over the uh, African region. So the, the, the jet stream is here, and there's a the vorticity center here. But there's no big trough. So what is expected is that trough will form, because there is a circulation here. Uh, it will generate a trough. And then it will generate a ridge here uh, in this direction. A ridge will be generated and which will in turn, uh, of course, entire thing is moving. Uh, of course, this is next image. You can see now the uh, it has moved this side. So a trough will, a trough will be generated somewhere here after it moves. Okay, this is still 23rd. Okay, I'm moving forward. The, you, you can see now. The, the, this has gone up. The, this is jet. And the, the, this indicates that process of rich formation has started now here. OK? So of course, I have skipped many images. Because otherwise, if I put too many, it, it will be congested. So it will be difficult to see. And a lot of data has to be copied to show you everything. So therefore, I have, after skipping some images, what I find is 25th. November, this is the situation. So ridge has started forming. Ridge has, okay, it is increasing. And on the forward side, a trough has started forming. If you see the wind, animation sequence of the wind, which I have prepared, uh, it will show that the trough has uh, started forming somewhere here, and it has dipped here and moved also further. Okay, so this is, uh, now, this I'm showing water vapor winds. You see the jet and, okay, see already the trough has started, okay, it, it is dipping further here, moving, okay. So now I have come to Indian region. I have shifted eastwards, okay. I, what you saw was this part on the west. Now I have come here. It is 26, 12 GMT, okay. So 26, 12 GMT, you see the trough has formed. It is moving eastward. See, as the, uh, the trough is moving, the winds are responding. That is important. Winds are also showing that trough is moving. And once you see this movement of the trough and, and the sequence of images, it is very useful for day-to-day uh, inference. So I think this has finished one part. Let me take uh, one minute and show you a... Sir, just to remind, uh, 35 minutes, uh, as you said. Okay, fine, fine. It's fine. 35 minutes are over. Is it yes, correct? Sir. Yeah, okay. yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you. I think uh, I will take...
go to another PPT, uh, which I have opened because this was becoming too big. So uh, I thought it may not move. What do I do? Sir, you will have to unshare and then do the same. Oh, is that so? Is that so? Okay, okay. Yeah, same procedure. Okay, okay. Uh, it, it will not work otherwise, is it? Yeah, no, it won't work. Okay. Because okay. you have shared the presentation. If screen okay. was so shared, what, then it will work. So what do I do now? You stop share. Stop sharing, yeah. Okay. okay, I stop share then. And then again, whichever PPT you want to share, again, you have to do the same procedure. Share screen and then the PPT. Okay, I I share PPT. Uh, PPT has come. Okay, then and then the blue button share button. Okay, okay, blue button uh, has not come. Let me see where is it. In the same window on the right uh, bottom corner. No, it is there is a red button. No, green button, share screen. Share screen, yeah, that you click, sir. Okay, fine. Then you will see which uh, different okay, okay. windows. Okay, yeah. fine, fine. Uh, this one. And then there will be another. Share. Okay, you are seeing now? Yes, we can see. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, fine. I should go to uh, PPT mode. Well, it's not coming. Sir, on at the bottom right, you can have that cup kind of. Bottom right? Yeah. Of which one? Of the PPT. Bottom right of the PPT, you will have that cup. Or you can but press F5 also, I guess. F5? Yeah. F5. It will come. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see this? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. I think you can continue to see this way. It it in fact it is the animation sequence of water vapor images for I think uh, four days. In fact, this is fifth, fifth July twenty three. Uh, as you know, on 8th July 23, there was a big event, heavy rainfall over the northern parts of the country. And what you are seeing is the, the circulation coming from the north. I go to next image. Okay, next image. Next image. Okay, you you see it is coming down one by one, and now the interaction of the, the monsoon monsoon winds are coming from the east, and western disturbance is here. Okay. You can see this. Uh, but this uh, top uh, you can you can click on slide show and from yeah. there also you can it's like show the slide show top bar if you go or yeah, yeah. top there is some i am not able to see where is that sir animation ke side mein hai slide show sorry se yeah slide show hai ha wo cursor ke upar transition upar le jaiye animation hai bagal mein Slide 
ओके द टॉप आर रिटर्न ना इंसर्ट ड्रॉ डिजाइन ट्रांजिशन एनिमेशन देन स्लाइड शो नहीं नहीं वो जो है ना वो उसके ऊपर कुछ आ रहा है वो दिखाई नहीं दे रहा राइट शो वगैरह ना या इफ यू गो यूर कर्सर यू जस्ट जस्ट गो अप यूर कर्सर जस्ट गो अप देयर इज ट्रांजिशन देन गो राइट राइट स्लाइड शो यूर कर्सर राइट राइट या जस्ट अप यस अप अबव दैट स्लाइड शो थोड़ा सा ऊपर करिए कर्सर थोड़ा सa What I am seeing is participants. Oh, कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है. Okay, that uh, view will be there. Oh, okay. yeah, yes, sir. हाँ, हाँ, वो आ रहा है कुछ. Anyway, ठीक है. नहीं, वो कुछ प्रॉब्लम है. ऐसा नहीं है. वो वो दिक्कत है. Okay, show it again. But I will show explain this way. It doesn't matter. Okay. So there are only one or two images. ज़्यादा नहीं है उसमें. Okay. So now the uh, water vapor image is showing that on eight the trough has formed. Interaction has started taking place, and uh, there heavy rainfall has started. So this is quite useful for. Uh, uh analyzing weather situation okay uh what i do i stop share again once yes yes sir yeah okay one more and then again go to share screen and uh first i have to stop share stop share okay uh nahi i have to share screen mm -hmm. and choose the PPT. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And share. Okay. Okay, sorry. I move it. Full screen mode में उसको click कर दीजिए ना. नहीं, full screen में आ नहीं रहा है. जैसे पिछले में problem था, इसमें भी वही है. So anyway, doesn't matter. मैं ऐसे ही दिखा दूँगा. इसको कोई problem नहीं है. इसमें ज़्यादा हो गया इसे दिखाने हैं. See, but I am trying to show the animation sequence of the water vapor vent. On third, uh, the circulation was seen quite high. In in the maybe I think north of fifty degree, north of fifty degree, and every three hours images, if you see, you see the the circulation is moving. Okay, it, it is moving southward. It, it is moving eastward, southward. Okay. This is how. So, the trough is moving. Trough is forming. It is indicating trough is forming, and winds are changing. So this, I think, I have come up to. Eight, eight third. So that is sufficient because the system occurred. So what I am trying to show is that in these high impact weather events, these products are very useful. You see, the jet is there, here, and because of the trough formation. Let me see the date. This is seventh. Sorry, it is not eight. It is, it was seventh. So anyway, this is possible now. It is next day eight, and. What is important is here also a ridge has formed, and there was a vertical center. If you see vertical product, the vertical center has descended from here, and uh, it has been quite useful for analyzing what actually actually happened in this event, and quite useful for diagnostic purposes. Maybe you can uh, use it for operational 
person is also if uh, you can analyze properly and have proper understanding of what these features mean. But yes, sir, many participants may not know what those wind barbs are. Okay, wind yeah. barbs. See, yeah. in the uh, <laughs> it is actually wind direction. It is showing. It is coming from the west, and here one bar it means ten knots. So west, ten knots, and if you see here, north coming from north. 15, 20 knots, whatever it is. If, if there's one, two barbs, 20 knots, and northwest, okay? And here, east, coming from east. Okay, fine. I think how much time I've got now? Okay. Uh, maybe five minutes. Okay, okay. Okay, so I think it's going to show you So what I do is I stop here now. Which is very good. Uh, a system over Atlantic Ocean. It's a, I have a video if I can put it on. I will be able to uh, share screen. Trying to start some video. Uh, video. I'm. Uh, I think I, I'm. It is becoming. It has become on on my. So I have to share screen. Yes, sir. Uh, are you able to see? No, no, not yet. No, no, uh, no. I I should share screen first. Share. So if I show share, I think it. It was a video it click it, it yeah. comes here. Okay. Yeah, video on screen. Click on. Video on 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 video video on 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 Video, no, double clip to Cardia, then eh? Abhi nahi aara. Abhi kya aara? Wo aapka screen dikh raha hai, bas. Different nahin, icons. Nahin. Jo bhi files nahin, hai, screen. Screen mein wo, screen mein wo video, video nahi dikh raha. Video to nahi chal raha. Pata nahi kaun sa file hai. Us file pe click kar dijiye. Bas sare. Ek minute. Main koshish karta hu. Aa gaya to theek hai. Nahi to chhod denge. Screen sharing, meeting controls. Thank you. 
स्क्रीन शेयरिंग कहा है मुझे पता नहीं ओपन विडियो not from the yeah okay now you just i'll stop you can share and you share the video on acha okay okay video on kare video on kar diya video okay. on now, now share the video now share yeah. it again share ab kidhar se karenge wo isme ja ke share video share screen ha ah. ha ye ye hai okay ye यही है आया नहीं है। आ, नहीं अभी आएगा मैंने शेयर अब अब आया यस सर कमिंग यस सर सर परफेक्ट एक्सीलेंट ठीक है ओके ओके तो ये जो एफर्ट किया उसका सी व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू शो इज इट्स ए मूवी सीक्वेंस ऑफ एटलांटिक क्वेश्चन एंड व्हाट यू सी इज साइक्लोनिक स्टॉक एंड ए फ्रंटल सिस्टम Actually, it is come again. It is come again. You see, a frontal system has steered the cyclonic storm northwards. I took it from the humid set side. We see a stratocumulus in the visible, and again stratocumulus in the infrared. The different, and behind that, cold air is coming from north, and a trough has formed. This is what is shown. let me show again so cyclonic storm here a frontal system approaching from the north okay the stratus cumulus forming here because of cold air coming from the north and now it will get hook on to the frontal system cyclonic storm and you can in fact see the trough forming how the trough has formed because of the cold air coming from the north and coming southwards that to cumulus in the infrared and visible so you can see the difference uh that to cumulus formations visible in infrared okay trough getting form once again fine i think i have finished thank you sir okay uh, sir if you can uh, stop sharing okay okay and before going to the question answer session we will just take a take photo So okay. I request all the yes. panelists to switch on their cameras. Yes, sir. Okay. Dr. Mohan, would you like to? Yes, I am taking. Uh, but I think you need to a bit bright light. It look good. <laughs> yes, as have now time. Oh, Thank you. Taken. Just a minute. Okay. So, 
Now I request Dr. Mili Ghosh, ma'am, to yeah. please continue with the question answer session. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. And uh, thank you, Dr. Bhartia, sir. Uh, it was very wonderful session and very informative also. Uh, there are a few questions, sir. Okay. Okay. The first question is uh, from Mr. A. Yeah, yeah. First question is, sir. Uh, Uh, Dr. Mili, I think uh, your voice is breaking. Sir, yeah, couldn't I... hear anything. Yeah, I... try again. Yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, the question is why water vapor channel can't detect low level moisture? Okay. Okay, the answer to that question is that uh, just recollect what has been taught in the theory. Uh, in the previous by the previous speakers about the weighting functions and uh, the sensitivity of water vapor channel. So if you recall that the water vapor channel, the sensitivity uh, is not there in the lower troposphere. It's in the upper troposphere. So therefore, these it cannot detect features near the earth. It's meant for upper troposphere, I mean mid and upper troposphere. The sensitivity is, is basically the there's contribution coming from near earth surfaces, near earth region is absorbed by the upper atmosphere and re emitted. So, therefore, what you see is the upper atmosphere uh, at the mid atmosphere, not the atmosphere near the earth region. So, it comes, answer is from the waiting function response of the water vapor channel. That that was mentioned by explained by different speakers in the previous lectures. Thank you, sir. Uh, the second question is: those satellite images with uh, wind bars look interesting. Which software was used to create them, or is it available from Hemavari native? Oh, so no, it it was the uh, winds product that I showed from Wisconsin. Wisconsin products and uh, the software if you want to see in the website of Wisconsin if you go there's a product description there's an icon for product product description it gives every detail of how the software has been written what was the reference paper on the basis of which the scheme has been worked out and so on so it gives every detail you can see Wisconsin site product description. It will give everything. Okay, sir. Thank you. And uh, there is another question, sir. Can we detect atmospheric rivers from satellite uh, images or uh, satellite derived products? Yes, atmospheric rivers. In fact, during winter, you can see over the Pacific region. The uh, most important product is TPW, total prestige water vapor, which I showed number of images. The water vapor starting from uh, Pacific reaching right up to the uh, east coast of America. So those are the atmospheric rivers. You can definitely see in the total Pacific water vapor. And of course, images also you will see them in different parts. But uh, water vapor transport is easy to see in the Pacific water vapor product. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is another question, uh, and it is, what's the major issue facing regarding monsoonal climate change, and does weather over uh, Indian Ocean affect the world climate change and monsoon? Actually, the, the question is about uh, whether it is over the Indian Ocean, it will affect the world climate. Yeah, yeah. See, basically, as I know, the trend is that temperatures are increasing. Uh, yesterday, Dr. Mahapatra gave a presentation on the so virtual press conference, and he mentioned that uh, over the past five or six years, there's an increasing trend of the temperatures. So the in what way monsoon will be affected? 
I think it's difficult to say. I cannot uh, say about it, but uh, I don't think uh, any there are some systematic studies might have been done, which I am not aware. Uh, okay, but okay. definitely warming trend is there over the yeah. Indian region and the Earth as a whole. In fact, twenty twenty three is expected to be warmest year. It will break previous records. That's what is expected. There was a report from WMO a few days back, but we have to wait for another month, for the month of December, to see if it actually happens and to what extent it happens. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is one more question. Uh, what are the major changes globally which affects because of Indian Ocean or Southeast wind? Indian Ocean. Of course, yeah. uh, Indian Ocean, I think, uh, the, what is important is MJ MJ waves MJ waves during the monsoon and the uh, uh, sea surface temperature that is also very important over the Indian Ocean and uh, these are the factors which affect uh, the, the sea surface temperature it it affects the El Nino yes okay. Oh. It is one of the factors for uh, uh, whether the activity will be good or not in a particular El Nino will be the monsoon system, whether the El Nino will affect or not, it is seen by the other factor also, sea surface temperature and other factors. This year it is there El Nino, but uh, rainfall has been small. But not to that extent that it's a drought. There has been a poke of good rainfall this year. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, now there is no question. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, for answering well for all the queries of participants. And uh, now, uh, Dr. Rohini, uh, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Mili. So now I request Dr. Mohan Kumar Das, who is Joint Secretary Sama to present vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Rohini. Dear participant and guest, thank you for joining the captivating 13th session of our satellite weekly online lectures. The expertise of eminent scientist Dr. R.C. Bhatia illuminated the crucial role of real-time operational utility in satellite images across the different seasons, making our exploration truly enlightening and inspiring. In our ever-demanding world, the importance of timely information is undeniable. The real-time operational utility of satellite images and their derived products, as highlighted, is invaluable, <laughs> aiding decision makers in efficient planning and resource management. This ability to adapt swiftly to evolving conditions underscores the indispensable role of satellite meteorology technology in navigating the complexities of different seasons. A special shout out to our SAMA executive coordination team members, Dr. Rohini Bhavar and Dr. Mili Ghosh Nilala, for nicely steering the session and fostering engaging discussions. To our global participants, your diverse contribution have made this session remarkable, showcasing the power of collaboration and gratitude to Air Vice Marshal Retired Professor Dr. Rojit Tiyagi, sir, Chairman of SAMA, Professor Dr. Shomesh Shadar, sir, General Secretary of SAMA, and Professor Dr. Shwagata Paira, Treasurer of SAMA, and also convener of this program for their unwavering support in shaping this enlightening journey. Thank you for being part of this enriching exploration into the world of satellite meteorology. May the insights gained today guide us to even more dazzling discoveries in the future. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Mohan, and thank you, everyone, uh, especially the speaker. So uh, we all request you next time for the part two uh, presentation from uh, Bhatia, sir. So all of you will be there at 3 o'clock. I think uh, that's a, we can conclude the program.
दासन यांनी your voice was not clear oh, my voice was not there okay so i just requested everyone to be present for the part 2 presentation oh, okay, okay. by bhatia sir next week so it will be yeah, yeah. i would just like to suggest that you know the lecture was very good uh, of course you know, bhatia sir has vast experience on this field but i see that uh, so many uh, participants uh, the way they have raised the questions i mean that is nothing to do with the satellite meteorology by the way I and mean, you are asking questions on climate change and impact of the ocean etc i mean this is not I mean, satellite meteorology you are supposed to learn satellite meteorology from these lectures and please ask relevant questions okay this is not a talk on the climate change moreover i can see that some of the participants are not even writing their proper name they are like anonymous attendee what is this anonymous attendee please write your name below your question Please write your name, name of the country, and your institution, if possible, so that people should know who is asking and where from he is asking, right? So please don't ask question like being anonymous at any and things like that. Okay, this is my suggestion. And ask question relevant to the satellite meteorology. All right. Yeah. So we can conclude the program. Yeah, Tiagi sir. Oh, thanks to all of you for conducting and uh, Somesh's uh, advice to the 